Hey everyone! Today we'll be testing the main relay of my 1992 Acura Legend. Stay tuned! So my 1992 Acura Legend developed a slight misfire a couple years ago that I never fully resolved. And that misfire has now turned into a no start condition. And I've seemingly narrowed that issue down to the fuel system, so that's why we're going to be looking at the main relay as part of that diagnosis today. One of the main relay's primary functions is to route battery power to the fuel pump, and it's a notorious failure point in Honda cars. Here you can hear the main relay click on, then click off like normal, so I'm fairly confident that it's functioning properly, but we'll still do a bench test anyway. To bench test the main relay, we'll obviously have to remove it from the car, which requires removing the lower portion of the dash on the driver's side. The first component we'll need to remove is the courtesy light switch panel, which also includes an LED for my aftermarket alarm system. A small flathead screwdriver should do the trick. Then just disconnect the courtesy light's wiring harness. Right behind the courtesy light panel, there's an 8mm bolt that has to be removed. The second bolt that has to be removed is behind the hood release. And the third and final bolt is on the lower right corner of the dash. The lower cover can now be removed. Just make sure you pull it over the ignition switch with the rubber grommet remaining intact on the cover. With the main relay now exposed, detach it from the body of the car by removing the 10mm bolt. There are two harness connectors on the main relay, a gray one on the right side and a brown one on the left side. I would disconnect the gray one first, then flip the relay over and disconnect the brown one. So here's our main relay, it's RZ-0105, and as I mentioned earlier, it's very typical for these Honda relays to fail, and that's simply because the solder joints on the circuit board crack over time and cause an interrupt in the power that's sent from the battery to the fuel pump. To remove the case, gently wedge your flathead screwdriver between the case and the front panel, then lever up. Repeat the process on the bottom, but of course you're going to be levering down instead. So my circuit board is actually just fine and that's because I removed all the solder and resoldered every single joint as preventative maintenance. One of the other reasons I removed the case is so we can do our bench test. In a few instances it will be a lot easier to probe on the back of the harness connectors as opposed to trying to probe through the front. This is the battery from my 1992 Acura Legend that we're going to use to do our bench test here. And what I've done is wrapped a 12 gauge cable around that negative battery terminal and secured it with some electrical tape. On the end of that cable I've also put a disconnect and that disconnect is shielded and that's so that if the negative and the positive touch each other we won't have any sort of a spark generated. I'll just repeat the process on the positive battery terminal making sure that I apply the electrical tape very tightly so that the cable is nice and secure.
I have a short run of cable on which I've installed an alligator clip on one end and a male disconnect on the other end. On another short run of cable I've installed a female disconnect and a male disconnect. The female end is more for probing purposes than anything. Okay we're going to do three tests here. We're going to start with test number one. With test number one I have the negative probe from the multimeter hooked up to terminal number seven on the relay and the positive probe hooked up to terminal number five. From the battery, I have the positive hooked up to terminal number 4 on the relay, and then we're going to touch on terminal number 8 with the negative. We have the multimeter in the continuity mode, so we should hear a beep when we touch the battery negative to terminal number 8. For our second test, I have the multimeter's negative probe hooked up to terminal number 1 on the relay, and the positive probe hooked up to terminal number 3. From the battery, I have the positive hooked up to terminal number 6. And then we're going to touch on terminal number 2 with our battery negative. For our third and final test, we have the multimeter negative hooked up to terminal number 7 on our relay. And the multimeter positive hooked up to terminal number 5. From the battery, we have the positive hooked up to terminal number 3 and then we're going to touch with our negative on terminal number 8. If your main relay passes all these tests, it's functioning normally. Otherwise, you might want to either replace the relay or take a closer look at the board to see if you have any broken solder joints.